In 1396, the Ottomans conquered Bulgaria and they would rule it for the next 500 years. In the last video, I compared the Ottoman rule of Bulgaria to the Norman invasion of England. Both instances involved an outside force creating a whole new social order, a whole new ruling language, and a whole new ruling class. The previous ruling class either fled, assimilated, or were killed. However, a better comparison would be the Norman conquest of Ireland. Unlike the Norman conquest of England, where the Normans essentially became the English over the course of 900 years, the Norman conquest of Ireland was firmly rejected by the Irish. Not just initially, as it was by the English as well, but for 700 years the Irish said no to Norman rule. By the beginning of the 20th century that Norman rule had evolved into British rule and by 1916 the Irish finally managed to revolt in enough numbers that the British were forced out of their country. Though not entirely because of Northern Ireland, which is complicated. All of history, as it happens, is complicated. So while a comparison between the British rule of Ireland and the Ottoman rule of Bulgaria is helpful, it's not a like-for-like -like situation. Still, let's look at the similarities. Both the British Empire and the Ottoman Empire were mostly seen as outsiders by the local population. Both the British Empire and the Ottoman Empire went through massive changes and a gradual decline over the hundreds of years that they ruled Ireland and Bulgaria respectively. What's more, in both places, this decline led to the eventual freedom of both countries. A final similarity is that even in 2018, the questions of borders and immigration between Turkey and Bulgaria are issues that live on today in part because of the prolonged Ottoman rule of Bulgaria. In Ireland and the UK, the question of borders and immigration between Ireland and the UK are issues that live on today in part because of the prolonged British rule of Ireland. Well, that and, you know, Brexit. Back to 1396 and the Ottomans didn't stop with the conquering of Bulgaria. What's more, the Ottomans didn't start with the conquering of Bulgaria. Their first conquest was the Byzantine Empire. They made Constantinople their capital and expanded outwards from there. By their peak in the late 17th century, the Ottomans had conquered pretty much all of the Balkans, most of Africa, most of the Middle East, the whole of the Crimea and even some parts of what are now Russia and Ukraine. In short, it was a vast and powerful empire, and it was this vastness and this power which made it so difficult for the Bulgarians to resist Ottoman rule. Under Ottoman rule, Bulgarians had a choice. They could either remain Christian and live as second-class citizens, or they could convert to Islam and become fully-fledged citizens of the Ottoman Empire. The Turks didn't force people to convert to Islam, but they also didn't treat Christians as equals. Jewish people living under Christian rulers in Europe were given similar treatment. Jewish people had been living in what is now Bulgaria since around the second century, and it's hard to say whether Jewish people were treated better under Bulgarian rule, Byzantine rule, or Ottoman rule. Under all of these empires, though, Jewish people were usually regarded as second-class citizens, being neither Christian nor Muslim. To the Jewish people, it's fair to assume that Bulgarian rule and Ottoman rule would have been pretty similar. During this era, some Bulgarians chose to convert, but many chose to keep their religion. What's more, Bulgaria's ethnic demographics didn't change all that much during this period either. Some ethnic Turkish moved into Bulgaria during this period, but most of these were part of the ruling administration. Most Turkish peasants remained in what is now Turkey. In short, for 500 years, most of the population remained Bulgarian and they remained Christian, but they had to admire Bulgaria's past and worship Christianity in secret. As much as many native Bulgarians may have disliked Ottoman rule, the Ottoman Empire did create peace in the region. Much of the first and second Bulgarian empires had been defined by years of back and forth fighting between them and the Byzantine Empire. By contrast, the Ottoman Empire meant hundreds of years of stability for the Bulgarians. Of course, this came at the price of hundreds of years of being treated unequally and 
unfairly. Before the Ottomans arrived, most Bulgarians would have lived as peasant farmers under the feudal system mentioned in the last video. Ottoman rule didn't change all that much about this particular system, except for the fact that most of the wealthy landowners were now Ottoman instead of Bulgarian, and of course, Bulgarian Christians were not seen as equal to Ottomans or Bulgarian converts to Islam. The most sizable community of Bulgarians who converted to Islam lived in the Rodopis, a mountain range in the south of Bulgaria, and they were called Pomaks, though not everyone in the Rodopis converted to Islam. In fact, the most powerful example of resistance to Ottoman rule in the whole of Bulgaria can be found in the Rodopi mountains. I am referring to the Rila Monastery. Built in the 10th century during the reign of Peter I, it was originally a monastery much like any other. Orthodox monks would live and work there in pretty much the same way as other Orthodox monks would. However, during the Ottoman occupation, this monastery became a refuge and a place of pilgrimage for Christians who wanted to worship freely and openly. In part, this was due to the monastery's history and its immense beauty. However, it was also largely due to how secluded it was. Way up in the Rodopes, it was hidden from the Ottomans. As such, it became the perfect place to hide historical relics from the Second Bulgarian Empire. It also hid things which were much more powerful, but much more abstract. The Bulgarian language and Bulgarian culture. As a side note, the history of Santa Maria de Montserrat in Catalonia is very similar. When the Franco dictatorship tried to eradicate Catalan language and culture, it was kept alive within this monastery hidden in the mountains. And I only mention this because I used to live in Catalonia for five months and I worked in a school in Monastrol de Montserrat, a small town at the foot of the mountain. While a monastery may have helped to keep Bulgarian language and Bulgarian culture alive, it doesn't inspire revolution by itself. Though, with battle after battle taking place on the fringes of the Ottoman Empire during the late 15th and into the 16th century, life for the Bulgarians got worse. With the Ottoman Empire stretched and losing resources and losing money, order began to break down. As such, local Ottoman representatives of the empire started to leech more and more wealth from the Bulgarians under their control. It was this gradual weakening of the Ottoman Empire and the gradual worsening of treatment of Bulgarians that inspired them to revolt. Folk stories of Hadux, Bulgarian highwayman who used to rob from the ruling Ottomans to feed the poor Bulgarians, began to spread across Bulgaria. These stories were mostly mythological, but they were rooted in reality and based on stories of real people. Of course, not all of the inspiration for Bulgarian revolt was internal. The Austrians helped to inspire one of the first revolts in Veliko Tarnovo at the end of the 15th century with anti-Ottoman propaganda. The Russians also wanted to support Bulgarian liberation as well. After all, for the Austrians and the Russians, the Ottoman Empire was an outside threat which was trying to expand into their borders. If they could take down this threat by inspiring people within the empire to revolt, they could push the Ottoman Empire back. The support of Austrian and Russian allies, combined with folk stories of Hajduks, combined with the decline of Ottoman authority and a decline of Bulgarian quality of life, eventually led to the national revival period of the 18th and 19th century. During this era, Bulgarians began to rally around heavily politicised ideas of Bulgarianness. These ideas helped to liberate Bulgaria from the Ottomans, and they also have had a lasting impact on how Bulgarians view themselves today. In the next video, we'll talk about the national revival and how it led to the Bulgarian nation-state of today. For now, however, Thanks for watching.